Hi, my name is Chad Carnes with MCA Connect, and you're watching 5 Good Minutes in Microsoft Dynamics AX. Today we're going to talk about an exciting reporting tool called Power Pivot. Now, in the first part of the blog, we're going to talk about a topic called RNI, Receive Not Invoice, but we're really just using that as a means to an end to talk about using the Power Pivot tool to build a report that might take us over 100 to 150 hours to build in standard SSRS. So what is RNI? RNI is Receive Not Invoice. Let's say I want to buy an orange from you and I send you a purchase order and you send me back a box with an orange in it and a packing slip. Well, I receive that orange in my inventory. Now, it's not like going to the store because you haven't yet invoiced me for it. I haven't paid for the orange yet. So us accounting nerds want to know, what have we received that we haven't paid for yet? Received, not invoiced. So once we look at that, we're going to kind of look at the table structure and kind of look at the table that that resides on and how to find it. But then we're going to, but the more important part is we're going to translate that into a power pivot report that again, in only five good minutes, might take us 100 to 150 hours in SSRS to, to create. So now we'll go ahead and jump into Microsoft Dynamics and uh, we're gonna jump in, we're gonna look at R&I on the purchase order line. So I'm gonna go to all purchase orders and I'm gonna double click on the, uh, on the lines here. I'm gonna double click to get into the lines. And then uh, we're gonna go to line quantities under the general tab, which is where we can see the activity on the PO lines. And the key field for received not invoice is invoice remainder. So if you right click on that field or any field in AX, you can right click and say personalize and this will tell you what table you're looking at. So here it's going to show us the table and we're going to use that table in our Power Pivot report. Go ahead and open up my Excel desktop and I've already downloaded Power Pivot. It's free on Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Office website. So you go ahead and you, and you click, uh, click the Power Pivot button and this brings us open and we can pick the database we want. I'm going to pick Microsoft Dynamics. I'm going to hit next. So in the previous uh, part, we saw where the perch line table was the source of data that we wanted to pull in. So I can come in here and actually pull the table into my Power Pivot file. But instead, I'm going to show you the other option, which is uh, we're going to use a SQL query. Uh, I've created just a simple SQL query pulling from the perch line table that pulls just the fields that I want to pull in. You can go ahead and copy that in. We're going to paste that in, and, and you can validate it. It works just like Management Studio. And from here, um, and from here, you have to. The only real concern you have to worry about with using SQL queries is a security and performance. So, you're pulling directly from the table. So you just need to make sure that the role center you set up that people should or should not have access to the data. There's also uh, we can also use O data fields as well as um, well, and use SQL queries within within the uh, Microsoft Dynamics AOT in order to populate these data through services. So now what I like about it is once we get the data in here, we've got kind of a temp table. I can add columns to help me better aggregate the data. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm actually coming in and I'm, uh, I'm changing the name of the columns and I am multiplying the quantity of RNI and delivery remainder times the purchase price. So quantity times price gives me an estimated amount of uh, what we've received but have not invoiced. Additionally, you can use if statements and lookups or any other type of Excel function to better aggregate the data. So I'm creating an if statement here that says, if the invoice remainder is true, it has a value, say true, and if it doesn't, say false. This way, when we're looking at data, we can see what uh, lines, uh, what PO lines actually have RNI and what PO lines don't a little bit easier. So you can kind of get creative with how you do this report. Additionally, I can hide columns uh, from my Power Pivot file. I can also hide them from my pivot table. So as you can see, status doesn't show up anymore because I hit it. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'll bring some data in. So I'm going to bring in just R&I lines that are true. And then I'm going to bring in the purchase order and we're going to bring in an amount. And uh, then, then the neat thing that I like is even if you're not going to connect to AX or if you're just a, a strong Excel user, you can use Power Pivot to what I call CFO proof reports. So we all know that the CFOs out there can't, you know, press three buttons. They really only can press one button because so that's all. So what you can do here is, is you can put these slicers in here so that you create, click one button and it aggregates the data. So now you're probably saying, well, this is just Excel. We'd have version control. How do we get this out? Well, you can actually save this into your SharePoint um, in AX. So the nice part about this is, is you install Power Pivot on your SharePoint and now anybody that has access to that folder or that role center can have access to the report that you created. So as I'm demoing here, I'm going to go ahead and save it into a, uh, into a shared document, uh, into the shared folders. And then I'm going to go ahead and then copy that link into uh, the Procurement Manager Role Center. So it makes sense if we're doing purchase order lines and we're looking at R&I, we'll save it into the Procurement, procurement Manager Role Center. 
So as you can see, I've clicked on it in SharePoint and I now have access to the exact same report we were looking at in Excel. So again, the main concerns, and you know, this doesn't work for every report, and this isn't a, this isn't a, a, a replacement for SSRS, but it does give you the ability to do some things and aggregate data a little bit differently than SSRS. In this report, you may need four or five reports to actually uh, accomplish the same thing you're accomplishing with this report. So I'm going to go ahead and save that as a link in the Role Center, and now you can click to it from the Role Center, and you can see that, uh, that, the, that the data is there. And in five good minutes, we've created a perch line report to show you R&I that in, that in uh, SSRS wouldn't give you the drag and, drag and drop functionality and uh, may, have, may take four or five reports to create.